Welcome to my switching routing and wireless essentials course. This should be the CCNA version 7 curriculum. This is the second of three courses. Welcome in this lab we are looking at lab 7.2.10 configuring DHCP v4. So what I'm going to be doing is I already have my PCAP file, not my PCAP, my pack tracer file open. Here is my addressing chart. Here is my objectives, my scenario. Read through them and let's go ahead and jump to part one. Configure a routing as a DHCP server. It has three steps. So step one, configure and the excluded IPv4 addresses. These are going to be things that we don't want issued. So on R2, I'm going to go ahead and get to my global configuration mode, comp T. I want from my global configuration mode, do an IP DHCP exclude address. And I'm going to give it the range of addresses I do not want to include in my scope. So it's 192.168.10.1 through 192.168.10.10. This will exclude the first 10 addresses from router 3's LAN. From there, I'm going to create a DHCP pool on R2 for R1 LAN and for R3 LAN. They are case sensitive, so we need to be careful. On R2, set up IP DHCP pool. The name is case sensitive, R1 LAN, all capital. That set up our pool. We need to give it some additional information. So we're gonna configure the pool to include the network address gateway and a DNS server. So at the DHCP TAC config prompt, we're gonna be issuing the network 192.168.10.0 network, give it the subnet mask, give it the default router 192.168.10.1, and give it the DNS server. You can give it more than one DNS server and it will accept it. But right now we're just issuing one. That gave us the basic configuration for our pool R1 TAC LAN. That's step two, done. Step three, create a DHCP pool on R2 Again, for R3, the LAN, configure the pool to include the network address range, the default gateway, and the IP address, and the DNS server, according to the information above. Meaning, look at the address table. First things first, IP, DHCP, pool. R3 TAC LAN. Again, pay attention. The uh, things are case sensitive. First one first. Network 192.168.30.0. It is a 255.255.255.255. Oh, too many. 255.255.255.0 and now I'm going to issue the default router which will be 192.168.30.1 DNS is going to be DNS server same address 192.168.20.254 that sets up our scope for both R1 and R3 all right, so going back, 
I did make a mistake. We did the exclude for R1. It also wanted us to do R30. I, re I read the instructions wrong. They gave us the example for R1. They also wanted us to do R30. So I'm going to go ahead and do IPDHCP exclude address 1 and 2, 1, 6, 8, 30.1 space 1 and 2, 1, 6, 8, 30.10. That excludes the first 10 addresses. We have one for LAN 1. We have one for LAN 2. R1 LAN and R3 LAN. So we have the ones for both of those lands. So that is good. Because we have our two lands. So step three, we've already finished. So now we need to set up relays. DHCP will not cross the layer three barrier. Meaning if you're trying to set up a DHCP and R2, well, R1 is a barrier. It's a layer 3 barrier. R3 is a layer 3 barrier. We need to set up R1 and R3 to allow relays of those DHCP requests. Uh, if you're not uh, familiar with DHCP requests, the DORA, D-O-R-A process, uh, let me know. I have videos on explaining how DORA functions and why door does not work over a layer 3 boundary door is the process of DHCP uh, requesting addresses so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a relay agent in part 2 so jump on R1 get to our global configuration in cough T we will be issuing a uh, navigate to the appropriate uh, interface. Here we have gig00. Zero zero. We're going to be setting what's called the helper address. And that is going to be the IP address of router 3. That's going to be the LAN interface on R3. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's going to be the helper. Uh, that's going to, the helper address is going to be the interface on R2. Basically, R1 will get a process, and it will say forward to that IP address 10.1.1.2. Go back to our address chart. 10.1.1.2 happens to be the serial interface between R1 and R2. That way, R2 can actually receive it and then process it. For R3, same thing. We need to get to the global configuration. We need to get to the LAN interface of R3, gig 0 slash 0, IP helper. And we need to give the helper address what is going to be the helper address for between R3 and R2? That will be 10.2.2.2. So we've done that part. Next, we need to configure the hosts that actually receive the ACP addresses. And then we have to verify the hosts have reachability and they've received their addresses. So PC1, IP config, DHCP, it pulled an address, 192.168.10.11. DHCP request successful. PC2, DHCP, it pulled at 192.168.30 address. Again, DHCP is successful. DNS is there, Gateway is there, Subnet's there. So we are good. That is how we configure DHCP to issue addresses. That's how we set up PCs to use DHCP addresses. So the next thing is, 
what happens if we want to set up a interface on a router to accept addresses? On R2, on our gig01 interface, that's going to be between router2 and the internet, we can set up a gig interface, gig uh, slash one, to use the IP address DHCP. That basically says, and I'm going to turn it on, to receive the address from the internet. Do show IP and brief. So right now it's using DHCP, it's unassigned. And we're going to give it some time for it to actually receive its address. It just went green up here, so it should be fully connected. Address is still trying to process. So I'm going to give it some time and I'm going to pause so it can do this. All right, there it goes. It took a little while, but it gained an address and it formed an adjacency. So we now have our DHCP and we now have our address. Part three is done. Verify DHCP connectivity. So what we can do is a show IP DHCP binding. We can see what addresses are attached to what MAC addresses. Verify that P, uh, PC1 and PC2 can now ping each other. Alright, so PC2 ping 192.168.10.11. First one should be an ARP request, it should time out, and then it should kick in, and it does. On PC1, ARP request has already been sent, so this one should have the uh, information, so all ICMP should go through, and it does. So that is end of lab. I'm going to check results. We've done 22 out of 22, 103 out of 103 points. Everything is green. We are good. If there's any questions, please reach out. Thank you.